In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is in our Today we celebrate the prophet Hosea, and I'm not going to say much about him, except that he was prophesying 900 years before Christ. And that's, there's an interesting theme in Hosea and throughout the Old Testament, the theme of idolatry, the theme of the chosen people of God who have been given the oracles of God, who have been given God's presence, who have been called out of bondage, who were led by Moses. And at every turn in the Old Testament, there's a prophet that comes about. Or even as Moses receives the Ten Commandments, at every turn, there's some sort of idolatry that causes the nation of Israel to stray, to fall away. One could read the Old Testament and kind of laugh and say, you idiots. I mean, come on, get it together here. I mean, you have the tabernacle of witness. You have the Ten Commandments. You've been delivered. You have the history. You have the fathers. You have the lineage. How is it that you could be tempted by idolatry? Stupid things like a golden calf or fertility goddesses or offering your children to Molech. How can that infect you when you have the all-powerful God as your, as your guide, as the one who is leading you to the promised land? We might say, you idiots. But then we see in today's epistle that Paul is talking to Christians in a very similar way, telling them to guard their hearts, that the temple of God and that idolatry have nothing, nothing in common. And he's telling this to the Corinthians because they are living in impurity of their flesh. They are operating outside of the commandments of God. And when they do, essentially, as every sin somehow ties to idolatry in some way, because we often idolize the pleasures of our flesh more than we want to serve God, because every sin, because we often idolize comfort more than the service of God, more than our love for Christ. And every sin in some way can be laid out this way. And the Corinthians have fallen into this. And so Paul tells that, lets them know again, like the prophet Hosea, the temple of God has nothing in common with idolatry. Now idolatry is, is very prominent within the modern church. It is because we live in a world that is surrounded with different competing ideologies, competing moralities, and some of us absorbed in this world or raised in the world become more worldly than we are absorbed or even discipled within the Christian faith. And so we are asked to challenge ourselves to look for our own particular forms of idolatry. You see, to follow those things which flatter our soul, to begin to pay attention to our behavior in our inner disposition, to see if we might have a problem where we often choose ourselves and the things of the flesh over the ways and the commandments of God. And that's the easy way to find out whether you have a, a problem is to take those Beatitudes, to take the Ten Commandments, and to simply give yourself a self-assessment. Do I serve the poor? Oh, that's Matthew 25. Is my heart hard towards my neighbor? Is my heart filled with lust, with envy, 
Do I covet other people's things? These very basic things, it doesn't have to be that profoundly deep, can help us to begin to, uh, 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 to assess ourselves. Now, today we also have a parable of the sower. And Jesus is speaking of the sower throwing seed on various forms of ground, and he explains the parable, which is wonderful because now I don't have to explain it to you again. He throws the seed, and by seed we can understand that seed is a potentiality. Seed is always something that grows into something else mature. And by saying that it's, it's potentiality, he says the seed is the Word of God. Now, the Word of God within the Christian faith can be specifically the Scriptures, which many people will say, speak of the Scriptures as the Word of God. The Scripture, or Jesus Christ himself, is the Word of God, the Logos of God. But in the monastic writings, in the writings of the fathers and of the church, we also have this notion that the Word of God is any sort of divine communication to us, any sort of seed that might be planted in our hearts that carries potential for us to be healed, for us to be transformed, for us to grow closer to Christ and his kingdom. And so, hearing that, that these seeds, these potentialities that God is sending his word out upon the earth, that he is constantly putting out things for us to connect to, that are meant to transform us, that are meant to heal us, and that are meant us to bring us into the fullness of our potential as Christians in Christian transformation, Jesus gives us, of course, the various forms of soil. Now, the various forms of soil are affected by our idolatries. Again, a very specific example was the soil where the thorns came up when they grew up at the same time, and, or the weeds, and they choked out the good seed. That was, he mentions very specifically, that it was choked out by the cares of this life. Because oftentimes, the cares of this life are much more important than the kingdom of heaven for us. The hard ground is the ground that's been trampled. Trampled because as we choose other things outside of Christ, I've mentioned a few examples, but every time we sin, it hardens our heart. The ground becomes hard. The seed has no way to germinate. It has no way to grow. Our job as Christians, faithful Christians, is to be cultivating our hearts so that we can receive these words. One of the ways that we can do this is being aware of those things which we gravitate the, the most. You know in politics they say follow the money. But in our faith, I'm going to say, follow your actions. Follow your actions and your inner dispositions. How Christ-like are you? Where are you motivated from? How, what do your actions say about your inner spiritual life? These are the only, these questions and this sort of examination are the only way for us to till the soil to see if we're actually filled with the Holy Spirit or simply filled with ourselves, filled with our wants, our needs, our desires, or simply filled with those things that flatter us and tell us we're okay. It's a challenge, but it's a good challenge. Jesus says those who have a pure heart and the good soil will bear fruit a hundredfold with patience. The final thing I'll add to all of this is that we'll bear good fruit with patience. Many of us have good hearts here. Many of us have parts of us that aren't so good and other parts of us that are really good. 
It's not black and white. It doesn't have to be black and white. But there's a patience that's also required within the spiritual life. It's not simply about tearing down idol and idols and reconsecrating altars, although we're called to do that. It's also about the day-to-day, -day, the practice of the faith, the simple living of the Christian life, which after generation and time after time and length of days, fruit is produced. This is not a quick fix help system that you find in the world. The Christian faith is about real transformation, real salvation, and real, um, real cultivation of our soul so that we can bear fruit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. He is in our